Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannon's, where you can be part of the Shannon's Club, Penrite Oil, Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm and Duncan Foster Engineering. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Classic Restos, back here in the United States of America to bring you some more exclusive episodes. And this particular return trip to the United States is a special thanks to Shannon's, where they continually surpass the competition, giving us as enthusiasts just so much. It's thanks to Shannon's. Ask about multi-policy discounts and sign up for the Shannon's Club. Call 134646 for a quote and see more at shannons.com.au. For oils, coolants, additives and technical assistance, oil right, use Penright. And Heron Forbes has the range. Buy online at machineryhouse.com.au. On today's episode, it's about a guy here in Ohio that has well over 1,000 Mopars. Sure, he's in the parts business, but today it's more about the man himself and a few of his own private cars. Meet Murray. He is larger than life. And when you are larger than life, in this case, you need large cars. And they don't come much more bigger than Murray's beloved selection of Mopars by Chrysler. Murray was born in 1969 here in Ohio. By the time Murray was barely a kid in school, car dealerships and various sales guys knew him. Imagine an 11 year old kid walking into a dealership and inquiring about a $2,000 car. Well, they used to try and fob him off. But Murray, being born with his enthusiastic entrepreneurial gene, he'd go straight to his grandfather at the time and he would assist him in buying the car. Why Murray's first car was paid for by his savings from selling hubcaps. Quite a stodgy ride for a kid back then. A 1967 Newport Custom, an executive type vehicle, a tad unusual for a kid. But Murray had automotive foresight. How cool is that Newport today? There's nothing too stodgy about it now. Anyway, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Murray can tell you stories about buying iconic cars. A 1966 Charger, 383 four-barrel car. Flicking out $980, then flipping it for two and a half thousand. There's a list of depressing look-back stories like that. Murray lives here with his wife, Mindy, and two daughters, Christina and Danielle, in a leafy township in Ohio. A lake fronts up to their backyard. It's where Murray sits after a hard day at the office from pulling ball joints to removing fenders and contemplating 100 things he has to do but cannot seem to get a start on anything. But recently, he has finished this. A 1974 Dodge Monaco, this model made famous from the movie The Blues Brothers. Hey, Murray, how you doing? Not bad, Fletch. How about yourself? Good, good, good. You know, I've got this surreal feeling. I mean, a 74 Monaco. Uh, I love the Blues Brothers. I don't know about you, but, I mean, I've watched the movie possibly over 100 times. This is the first time, up close, that I've seen a car that's replicated so well. Now, you mo part of the bone. That's why such a good job's been done here. What can you tell us about it, Murray? Well, it's it, it's... It was actually a rush job to be done for the Mopar Hall of Fame this year as they inducted the Bluesmobile into the Mopar Hall of Fame. And we got it done, did a great job, I believe. Um, proper decals, proper push bars. Always wanted one done. I've Every one I ever had, I got in the works of and sold. And and this one I, I hope to keep and, and we can enjoy it a lot. Murray, it's amazing that such a stock standard type car that was relatively just unknown before the Blues Brothers was made so iconic. I agree. It's, it amazes me. The, the cars are worldwide known, as, as you well know. Um, I, I get customers from all over the world either looking for a Bluesmobile or a Monaco to, to build into one or even parts for one they already own in Europe and New Zealand, Australia, everywhere. And it, it amazes me. And even driving the car here in the U.S., um, people recognize it. You know, we're talking a 27-year-old movie here, and people recognize this car, young, old, 
it amazes me the the following it has. Yeah. Now, the 440, as we know, iconic engine uh, for Dodge and uh, used in the Blues Brothers movie. Um, in terms of 74, what engines were available for that? Um, well, obviously, police package was normally the 440, but you could order anything from a 318, 360, 400, all the way to the 440 in a in a civilian version, if you will. Um, um, but yeah, you could you could get anything you want and any trim level, two door, four door, hard top or sedan. Um, they, they made a lot of variations of them. See, I think, uh, I mean, the Americans over here, these guys love their two door cars. I mean, I, I, lo I love my four door cars uh, as well. Um, I think y you get a lot of car with a four door car. I mean, these are, uh, there's a lot of car sitting right here. Um, it's big, it's bold, it kind of sits up and looks at you, which then takes on the interior where you've got two reasonably sized front doors, the back doors are small, not much leg room in the back, but it doesn't matter because when you're in the back and you look through to the front, you see that certified 140 miles an hour speeder. That was a good score. Oh yes, those are quite hard to find also. I was happy to find that to be able to get it in there. Now Murray, got to ask you, the build time, now how long did it take you to do this? Well Fletch, um, start to finish about two and a half months. Two and a half months. That's yes. pretty. Most people take a couple of years. This guy does it in two and a half months. Well, well keep in mind this car was wrecked. Yep. It was it was wrecked in the front. We had to put a whole front clip on it, which I had a donor car for. Um, it, it you know we painted it. Fortunately, the interior didn't need done, yes. and mechanically it was pretty good. So we didn't have to do a lot of mechanical work, other than some brakes and tires and things. But uh, so it was all about making it look the part more so than than a total ground up on it. It was a, a, a fresh off the road car that I started with. I cannot believe how well this car rides. I mean, I enjoyed driving it yesterday. I mean, I think I was late back to the hotel room because I couldn't get out of the damn thing. Yeah, it definitely definitely has a big Mopar comfort, which you can't beat, and, and it, it's a, it'd be a great road car to go anywhere you want it. it, it it's a great car. You could literally be comfortable all day long going from one side of the United States to the other, but it's not a high option car, but it still has that comfort. Oh yes. Uh, uh, it, it, almost no options um, other than it does have cruise control which would make it nice nice for a road trip <laughs> just love the full-size cop cars the big black 15 inch steel wheels the high profile tires it's just tricked out hundred percent it's so spot on yep it's got the right wheels the right tires well the right tires for modern tires um, uh, we've done the heavy-duty sway bars I still need to put heavy-duty torsion bars in it we didn't change those yet but I'm going to do that but it still has the 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 cop car feel. Yeah. If it hadn't have been such a rush, we'd have got all that done first. But we had to get the look done for the for the um, uh, appearance it made. But yeah. but now we can drive it and use it and, and upgrade it a little more. That's awesome. Now over the years, Murray, um, how many of these uh, Monarchos have you seen come through the place? Oh boy, I've probably had uh, twenty five or thirty of them all total probably half of those got dismantled for parts and the other half got sold and are a bluesmobile somewhere in the world <laughs> yes. all right we'll stick around because after the break we're going to be back and murray's going to show us a sensational 1962 imperial right yep we'll have a 62 and a 64 for you to take a look at well of course we're not just going to have one in why have one imperial when we can have two that's right you can never have enough imperials fletch yeah, absolutely uh, that's a subject for another day. You should see the stuff lying behind the scenes as this bloke's got. All right, stay in your favourite chair. Back with more after this. I spend a lot of time out here. The RT Charger's the real deal. An E49. Remember A Charger? I've always got projects on the go, so Shannon's laid-up cover helps protect my restorations. I'm Mopar through and through. It's a passion Shannon's understands. I wouldn't insure my cars and bikes with anyone else. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Penrite, Australian made, family owned and operated. Make premium quality engine and racing oils, warranty approved coolants, automatic transmission and manual gear oils, a complete range of engine and fuel additives, heavy duty and industrial products for every application. Visit penrideoil.com for more information. Penrite, Australian made for Australian conditions since 1926. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Look at these restoration products. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, 
professional panel restoration kits, and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Heron Forbes has the range. Welcome back here in glorious Ohio. How you doing, Murray? Very good, Fletch. Are you having fun? I'm having a great day. It's a beautiful day. Everything's getting better, even the cars. I mean, it doesn't matter what car you pick here. They're all good. But uh, we've gone into the 60s now. 1962, an Imperial Crown. Now, we know it's not a Dodge. Is it a Chrysler? Actually, no, Fletch. It's not a Chrysler. It is an Imperial. Imperial was its own division from 1955 through 1975. Um, just as a Plymouth was its division... So uh, they're often called a Chrysler Imperial, but honestly, they're not. They're an Imperial. That is the, the make is Imperial, and then the model would be Crown. This is a, an extraordinary shape. I mean, we're talking uh, designer here, uh, Virgil Exner. Right. I mean, we've yes. got external headlamps. I mean, that's uh, we've got gun sight tail lamps up on top of the rear quarters. I mean, it's so bizarre. Yeah, everywhere you look, between the square steering wheel and uh, and the the wild dash with the with the vertical push buttons and heater control to match, um, it was it was the end of the Exner era, and uh, it was it was quite an ending. Just an interesting question. Over the years, you've had a bunch of these. Oh yes, lots of them. Yes. Obviously, you've you've kept this one. See, with Murray, he's got so many cars. The ones that mean a, a real lot to him are here at his private home. Um, I guess it's a case of where do you put them. That's my trouble. I'm always out of space for cars, always. And uh, uh, this is in my wife's garage, and and it needs to go somewhere before it starts snowing here. But um, <laughs> he's got a, he's got a problem with space. He lives on acres, and he rents acres as well, and he still has a problem with space. Uh, well, that's what happens when I guess you. Yeah, the collection keeps on growing. Yeah, it's a sickness. It's it's beyond a collection. It's a sickness. Yes, <laughs> a sickness. And and what's the antidote? Well, we just keep on doing yeah, what we do. Just just buy more. Every now and again, sell one so you can buy some more. <laughs> You know, I started as a young child, basically collecting hubcaps and and uh, all makes models didn't matter. My, you know, my grandmother, when I was six years old, would ask me, "What do you want for Christmas?" And I'd say, "I want a box of hubcaps." And would you believe she'd go to the junkyard and dig around in the hubcap pile, and she'd get me a box of hubcaps, and that made me happier than any anything she that I could have gotten. And and uh, um, so when I started into other auto parts, by the time I was eight or nine had to rent a storage building because my dad threw me out of the garage because I had too much junk. <laughs> and uh, I had all makes and models. And, and one day I just decided, you know, it, to, to do this right, I need to be, I need to specialize. Well, even though it wasn't a business thought then, I decided my collection was going to be all Mopar. I've been around classic and vintage cars since I could say car, probably before I could say car actually. <laughs> My father took me to a lot of car shows um, from when I was old enough to walk, probably. Um, probably even before that, but of course I couldn't tell you that. I love 50s, 60s, 70s, big American cars of all kinds, but I have chosen Mopars as I think they're some of the best design styled cars, but, but I love them all. There's, there's, I grew up around a lot of Cadillacs, 50s Cadillacs, I love them. At 16 years old, I was driving halfway across the country in a, in a friend's 58 Eldorado Brits convertible um, with my learner's permit. So, I mean, I, I, I loved it. It was, it was a wonderful experience. Um, but, but Mopars are my thing. Um, we always had uh, Mopars as, when I was a child growing up. That was our everyday transportation. We're always Mopars. Um, and so I got very used to them. I'm an American car guy. Don't don't care much for for uh, other uh, other countries' models, but I, I'm an American car guy. I, I just love big American cars. Now we've got this gorgeous burgundy red '62 behind us here. Now, uh, what can you tell us about the car? I mean, it's a, a very it's a question I ask a lot on cr classic restos. I think because we go back to the original owners, these cars came with identification plates usually mounted on the radiator support panels. I think that is fantastic to think now in 2016 most of these cars have still got the original owner's plates. They do actually 62 they hadn't come out with that yet. Uh, 65 was the first year they came out they called them a CertiCard and it was used for warranty work and it had 
it was a it was essentially a credit card made of aluminum and it had the vin number of the vehicle and then their owner's name address and the date they took delivery of the car and it was it was kept in a in a little pocket under the hood so when the dealer needed to do warranty work they'd pull it out make a copy of it and they had all all the information one thing about this game you'll never learn everything you just learned then 1965 was the first year of that i mean there are just so many thousands of things uh, you'll just never get it oh never i learn stuff every day it, it amazes me things that you just learn by doing or listening or watching or or a lot of it by doing, just by, by being around them. Well, Murray, you've been around a long time. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you've never been caught out with a question. I mean, I think you're uh, fairly up on Mopars. Pretty much so, especially the, these big ones that are, are my part. You might get me on a, on a CUDA question, but uh, you're not going to probably get me on an Imperial question. Okay, well, on that subject, run us through some features of this particular car. Okay, this car, uh, it's a Crown four-door hardtop. Uh, it's colors Embassy Red with a cocoa metallic cloth and leather interior. And... As you'll have to see, the interior is awesome. It, it, the cloth, it, it sparkles. It's got a metallic sparkle in it, and it's beautiful. Uh, 413 cubic inch engine with a push button 727 torque flight. First year for the aluminum torque flight. Oh, cast on uh, yeah, 60, prior. 61 had a, had a cast iron. This is the first year for that. However, also 62, they didn't have park incorporated yet. You had you, They only... You had to put it neutral and then use the parking brake, which was a drum on the back of the transmission, just like the early cars. Um, it's got factory air. It's got power windows. It's got power vent windows. Of course, power seat. It doesn't have some of the, they were available with autopilot um, and power door locks. It, this particular car doesn't have those, the, all those options. But yeah, autopilot was cruise, right? That, yeah, essentially cruise control. This particular car is mostly original. It's got a 20-year-old repaint on it. But other than that, the interior is original. The drivetrain's original. It's got 88,000 miles. Um, I'm the third owner of it, and it's always been here in Ohio. I mean, even just digressing a moment, just looking left over there, the back of the... Uh, LeBaron, the yeah, Imperial. That one is, yeah. Look at the rear of that. I mean, who else would design a rear bar like that? That really takes me, that does. Elwood Engel designed those cars starting in 64, and he also, he had left Ford and had designed the Lincoln Continentals, so that's why you do see some of the similar traits. Yeah. Look, I tell you what, this is uh, the sort of place where you could, uh, I don't know, not that you'd want to pitch a tent in the front yard here, I'd rather go inside, but you could stay here for days, many days, speaking to Murray. Now stick around, because after the break, we're coming back with a... 1964 Imperial Crown. One of my favorites. There you go. We're in the United States of America. Perhaps you deserve to be on a Fletch tour in 2017. Have a look at this. There is nothing quite like a Fletch tour. Carlisle or Ford Nationals, GM Nationals and Chrysler Nationals await you. Book a Fletch tour. It's amazing. We've seen some absolutely amazing cars. What an event. Experience Route 66 from Chicago to Vegas or choose the Detroit tour. I would make it a point to go to Fletch Tours and come to Detroit. There are five Fletch Tours. Select the one that suits you best. See FletchTours.com or contact All Things Travel, Lara. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Heron Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years. And it's easy to see why. And with a range like this, you cannot go wrong. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House and they're also open Saturday mornings. Their range of machine tools are workshop tested. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerywhouse.com.au. So remember, Hair and Forbes has the range. In 1926, a 
Australia's Penrhyn Oil Company was established. Almost 90 years of research, development and refining under the harsh Australian conditions has made Penrhyn Oil what it is today. Precision, performance, reliability and protection. Championship winning products. Trust Penrhyn. Welcome back. Now we've got a 64 Imperial. What a beautiful car, Murray. Yes, one of my favorites, all-time favorites. Finest car I've ever driven. Well, now this means a lot to you. Uh, we've got significant changes from the 62. we now looking at Elwood Ingle, the yep. designer of this car. That's correct. He actually had come from Ford and was a designer of the 60s Lincoln Continentals. As you can see, the, yeah. the, the same styling, yeah. but a more refined version of it, yes. That's really interesting. This is the first day I've actually, I'm learning this too, because you're right. I mean, when you look at the side profile, it looks uh, quite Lincoln. Yes, very similar, yes. And the, and the molding that runs front to back down the car, um, of course, it carries the the trademark Imperial split grille, um, but, but it has, you can see styling from both cars in it, yes. What a, uh, a massive transformation just in those two years from 62 to 64. Yeah, even though the, the platform of the car is essentially the same. Yeah, the, the frame and the running gear and all that is essentially the same. Yeah. The outer skin of the car is completely different, as you can see. I mean, it's tamed right down by, oh, yes. by comparison. Oh, definitely. Um, we get back to that rear styling of the bar there. I mean, that rear bumper bar on the, these Imperials, uh, as I mentioned earlier in today's show, uh, there's no other bumper bar quite like that shape. No, definitely not, with a, with a big, almost overdone Imperial Eagle in the yeah. back. And, it's like a big belt buckle. Exactly, yep. Uh, wouldn't work on most cars, but they've really, really... It blends with everything on the car and really, really sets it off. Okay, engine up front, of course, we've got the famous Mopar, the 413 happening there. Yes, 413 wedge engine that was used for the first year, 59, and they used it up through 65. Mm. And then it was basically redesigned into the 440 yeah. from then on. Yeah. But uh, great engine, um, 340 horsepower, all you need to move that big car, does the job well. Yeah. Now, this car means a lot to you. Uh, give us some reasons as to why this car is so special to you, Murray. Well, I've put a lot of time and work in it, and it, it's just, it's just right. Everything on the car, it drives nice. It's, it, it drives better than nice. It drives wonderfully. It rides wonderfully. Very reliable. Turn the key and go any place you want to go. Um, and and it's not so perfect that you're afraid to use it. You know, you know, you don't worry about leaving it in a parking lot. Um, although it is a very nice car. I mean, inside too, I mean, beautiful interior as well. Uh, once again, we're talking one of these top-end cars that has uh, been lucky enough to go through life, uh, through its working time, and sh just shoot out the other side unmolested, yes. not knocked about, a, a total car in its entirety. These are the lucky ones. We keep saying this. I mean, there's not many of these left, although I think uh, <laughs> the ones that are left in the United States, Murray's got. Yes. Well, Fletch, like, it's a lot like the 62. It, it is a very original car, other than probably about a 20-year-old repaint, but the interior's original, drivetrain's original. It, it hasn't been restored. It's just been freshened up a bit. Incredibly opulent dashboards. The layouts are just superb in these cars, aren't they? Yes, definitely, and, the, and just the, the, how the gauges are set and the, the speedometer, how it fills up as you go instead of having a needle it, it's just it's the styling was was really yeah. really interesting gotta love these things too i mean being pillarless yes. i mean that's just style all day long i believe the closest thing to a convertible is a four-door pillarless car i agree um even more so than a two-door because most two doors you are, are a bit more shrouded with a, with the roof where these are really a wide open feel with all the windows down and it can be quite a breezy ride can't it oh very much so <laughs> it's yeah usually if you go highway speed you don't want to be in the back seat with all the windows down <laughs> <laughs> absolutely murray i want to thank you so much for today thank um, you very much fletch it's, i'm glad you came to see me no that's a well i'll tell you what it's not as though you're just around the corner either no not exactly <laughs> It's a long way to go for a cup of sugar. Yes, most definitely. <laughs> You've uh, showed us three fantastic cars. Love the Bluesmobile. There's just something about that. That just uh, sitting down there, its stance, 
it just makes you want to drive that. The 62, what an incredible car. And, of course, the 64, the transition there of those two years and seeing how the Imperial has moved on the timeline as well. Uh, what a variance. Thank you so much, Murray. No problem, Fletch. And I still am going to let you drive this, and then you'll decide you have to own one. Right. Okay, well, let's see what happens about that, huh? Okay, yeah. sounds good. Right. You take care. Thanks, yep. Murray. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming. No problems at all. Thanks, buddy. Well, there you have it. That wraps up this week's show. Special thanks to Murray for showing us just a few of his special Mopars and, of course, to Shannon's Insurance for making this return trip to the United States a reality with more content coming your way over the next couple of weeks of the show. As I say at the end of every episode, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. You can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Classic Restos TV and watch catch-up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos, proudly brought to you by Shannons, where you can be part of the Shannons Club, Penrite Oil, Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm and Duncan Foster Engineering.